Bang! Knees knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is at work and today we have something pretty amazing here. The Neve from Russia which makes diamond infused stones. Asked us if we wanted to check out some of the stones and we absolutely do. I, you guys don't, I love sharpening and these are some of the best sharpening stones on the market arguably but I mean yeah. So I've never tried any of their low grits. And not only did they send me a low grit, they also sent me two other stones plus some of their diamond compounds. I'm really excited to try these. And these, each one of these plates are double-sided. So it's basically six grits all in one. We are going to use them in this video. Let's get to it. By the way, we are going to be giving some of these stones away here coming up pretty soon so i'm really excited about that and yeah so watch out for that I do not know a lot about their compounds. That's why I'm really excited to to get to know them. I can't say that I will be able to give you all the information in this video on these compounds, but I, you know, I'm still learning about them myself. Okay, let's talk about the good and bad on these and then also talk a little bit compared comparing these stones to other stones so first of all they use monocrystalline diamonds that's what's bonded in the resin through and through so there are different thicknesses you can get so this is the dragon series which is two millimeters thick these are these are running about 160 dollars for the double-sided now you can get the phoenix stones which are one millimeter thick for about 82 dollars for double-sided so same size the they're about three and a quarter by eight inches i know they, they're labeled as three by eights but they measure three and a quarter by eight inches so you can get the cheaper sets for 82 dollars that are one millimeter thick each side of the bonded uh monocrystallines now the very low grits have a a binder that is coarse it does have an abrasive binder now the higher um or say the finer coarse you know courses um the finer bonded stones are ocb and are non-abrasive binders so basically the really coarse stones the extra extra coarse stones they have a binder in it that is coarse but the higher grits do not have a binder that is coarse it's a non-abrasive binder the resin is phenol formaldehyde resin that the monocrystalline is mixed with or that the binder is made with also, they come in different size stones, so you can get the, the stones that work for um, for different systems, like KMEs and stuff like that. Now, you can also use water on these. You don't have to use the soap and water. They actually recommend water. I like using soap and water. I find that it works better. It helps stop them from getting clogged as fast, but you can use just plain water. Now, a diamond plate, a regular diamond plate, is just a layer of diamonds over the surface. It's a metal plate with just diamonds right over the surface. When you wear those diamonds out, they're gone. And they they wear very fast compared to these. So you will wear a diamond plate out eventually, no matter what. It's just how long it takes. These last a very, very long time. Now, let's look at a close-up really quick of... The surface of these, first we'll look at a real regular diamond plate, and you can see just plain diamonds. And then we'll look at a, the surface of one of these. Now remember, that's a resin 
and you can actually see it if you really look at it you can see the diamonds sparkling in there now they kind of feel similar to a ceramic stone but they're they have a little bit of cushion to them and that's the resin now a they do build up though a lot like a ceramic stone does how they build up and you got to clean them off you can clean them off during your sharpening you're going to want a a little stone like an aluminum oxide stone or a silicon carbide stone and you know you can you can basically scratch the surface and it, it goes really quick and only takes a few seconds but you're gonna the the longer you have these and the more you use them, the faster they're gonna get clogged. Then you might have to resurface them. Now there's different ways to clean them. You can take them up to your sink and use Barkeeper's Friend. That works just fine. If you really need to, you can buy silicon carbide powder and reflatten them. But if you take care of them while you're sharpening and just get one of the a, a little aluminum oxide stone, I use a Lansky stone and it works great. I use the coarse, the red um, Lansky stone and that works great for me. But they do sell little um, squares of in a in brace of little stone that you can use to condition these and then as they get clogged you can just scratch the surface you know and basically get the 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 steel off of the surface now the high grit ones are the ones that are going to get clogged faster the low grits don't get clogged very fast but the high grits do and like i said the older they get and the longer you use them, the faster they'll get clogged. When you get them brand new, they don't clog very fast. But after a while, they will. But if you condition them and keep up with them, they will, uh, you know, it's pretty fast to clean them off. Now, the difference between an aluminum oxide stone and these is an aluminum oxide is that is the what's cutting the steel is the aluminum oxide. With these, it's the monocrystallines, which are diamonds. Now... A, an aluminum oxide will cut just about any steel, but when you get to really high carbide uh, steel, it, it's better to cut them with diamonds. And sometimes the, the aluminum oxides can tear carbides out of the steel. I'm not going to get really crazy into this, but they, they, they help sharpen super steels to a level of which aluminum oxide can but you you can have issues i think with the the edge retention and stuff because of carbides being tore out and stuff like that it, it's it, i can go in for a long time about this but but these do like i've sharpened just about every steel on um the, these type of stones and they they work great for a lot of steels but for some of your budget steels and you know the lower grade steels they're they're not necessary but when you get like to s30v even you know even maybe a little bit less than s30v and up they work fantastic and especially when you get up to like m390 m4 s110v s90v th that's where these will really shine they really bring that edge out on those steels now what's the difference between a ceramic stone a ceramic stone is just a ceramic plate there's no abrasives in it it's just the the ceramic itself that's very hard it's very hard and that's what's cutting the steel is just the fact that this is very hard now with this it actually has an abrasive so it actually cuts the steel the ceramic it does it moves the steel basically so you can sharpen on ceramic but it's it's a lot more difficult it mostly just refines steel so you want your edge already sharp when you go on to a ceramic and then it just basically refines and basically massages the steel you know nice and flat and polished this actually cuts it and you know removes steel to to the point of polish or to the point of sharpening whatever you know you're trying to do
So the good and the bad things. The good things about these is they cut any steel, especially the the super steels. Um, they they are expensive, but they last a very very long time. They are very easy to use. They do clog, so that's a negative, but but it's easy to clean off at the same time. Another good thing is they do come in different sizes. They do come with stones that fit other systems. And they do have from extra coarse all the way up to ultra fine. So they're easy to use. They cut any steel. They last a very, very long time. I like, I personally like the feedback on them. I find that they're easy to use um, or easy to hold an angle on. They come in different sized stones. They fit other um, devices. And they're very flat. Now, with some negatives, they are expensive, but they last a long time. So, are they? I mean, you're going to have to buy multiple diamond plates. Lots of diamond plates to last as long as one of these. So, um, another negative is they do clog. They do clog up. The service will get clogged up, but you can clean them off relatively fast. The very high grits are the ones that are, that are going to clog the fastest. Let's get back to sharpening. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the coarsest one. And this is the middle one. And then this is the finest, the yellow. So when you're putting this stuff on, I've never had this stuff. So I don't know a lot about it, but I've had um, aluminum oxide paste before. And I know you only want to use a little tiny bit and rub them on. Now this is diamond compound. So it, so it is a little different. Now you do have to let it dry. So it's going to take probably about a day to really dry. Now you're going to want just... Oh, it's hard to come out. All right, let's get a card. This isn't really a good card to use. Do you want to like, like I said, it is going to take some time to dry. So that's why you don't really want it that wet. This was probably entirely way too much, but I'll try to spread it pretty thin. The best way I feel like is with a card even if it's a paper card like this one. And kind of just massage it in. That was probably entirely way too much. Now let's do this one. Yeah, this one's not really spreading as good. But here, let me go like this. Get one good line across it. That way the card will catch it. There we go. See how it does that? This is the way the green one looked after it dried. I did this before I ever even started. And I did try it a little bit. So, but you see how light I put it on? It worked pretty good. So, now... You don't want to use this now for a while because what it'll do is it will just like, it'll make your edge pasty. Right here, I'll show you what it'll do. See that? That's what'll happen until it dries. It'll still work, just not good. You know, and then you got to constantly clean it off. So... So you are going to want to have a, a couple things handy while using these. I like to use soap and water mixed up. So what I basically do is just use some Dawn soap or just some dish soap. Put it in a water bottle and shake it up. You want to basically have enough water in there to when you shake it up, the sound goes away. Then you know you're pretty good. Paper towels. And possibly a rag or a towel handy. Now, another thing, for these stones, you want to have some sort of conditioning stone 
This is an aluminum oxide stone. It's for conditioning the stone when it starts getting clogged from the steel. Now, some of these sharpening techniques that I'm going to go through will work on any stone. So, if you don't have these, the, these exact stones, the movements are going to be the same across the board. And today, we are going to sharpen some Rex 45. This is Timbo. This is Tim's knife. He sent it in for me to check out, and it's in Rex 45. And we're going to sharpen it up today. Let's get to it. So, you're not going to need much water. This, these are a splash and go type of stone, so they don't soak up. I'm going to find my angle. The way I'm going to find my angle is I am going to just lay the knife on the stone and I'm going to lift up until the shadow underneath the stone goes away. You see how there's a shadow underneath that, um, on the stone underneath the edge? I'm going to lift, 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 right there. The shadow is gone underneath the edge. So I'm going to do that right now, right here. Basically, as long as the edge is hitting the stone, that's a good enough angle. You don't have to be perfect as long as you can repeat it. I like to bring a marker with me, not to mark the edge. I know a lot of people do the edge or the marking of the edge. I like to mark my finger. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my finger, I'm finding my angle, and then I'm taking my finger and I'm setting it directly behind the knife in one specific spot of the blade. And I'm going to push on it. It's going to leave a little mark on my finger. And then I mark that spot. That will be my angle every time. Then I take on this finger, my thumb, and I match it up. Lay my thumb down, lay my pointer finger down, and I match it up. Now you see a line on there. Now I will draw that line on my finger. Now that's my angle on both sides. And if you notice that one seems a little bit higher than the other, you can change it as you're sharpening. Usually it's pretty much right on the money. I'm also going to match or put a mark somewhere on the blade. And that is where my fingers are going to go every time. That will come off with some alcohol. Give it a little splash. So now we have my line bang right there very easy and now i can start sharpening okay so far this does feel pretty aggressive it doesn't it feels kind of like a diamond stone but not quite because i feel like there's like more you know this is the first time it's being used so it might just need to be broken in a little bit but it feels like there's a little bit of slippery spots in areas. Yeah, I can already see it. You can obviously see the spots that are not being hit yet, but at least we see it getting hit. I'm just going to hit this really quick like this. It's gonna knock down some of those real aggressive areas. Some people do that to their diamond plates, I personally don't do that to my diamond plates, do this, because I like them very aggressive. But, um, and also they don't last as long as these stones, so I don't like to take life away from my diamond plates. I just let them break in naturally. With these, it's not a big deal. So what I'm doing is I'm just letting my finger drag across the stone, guiding the back of the, the knife while this hand controls it. And then on my finger, I can feel if it moves at all. All right. There's a little bit on the heel we haven't hit. We will hit that here in a second. Those are usually the hardest spots to hit 
on a spider co that is new or that's uh, got a fresh that's got a factory edge now as long as your finger is guiding you all any movements you make is going to be pretty much okay as long as you don't change that angle now let's look at it from this point of view when i do the other side we do have a burr all the way up and down still have a little bit at the heel i need to hit not a big deal though so we're gonna match up to my thumb match up the line bang there we go there's our angle Now, as long as my angle stays the same, I can move back and forth, across. I'm going to want to lift a little bit when I get towards the tip, just to get the tip. Or go around like that, bring it around. And you basically kind of just rock your wrist just a little bit as you turn. Not very much. Yeah, I can definitely tell this thing's more aggressive than I thought it was going to be. But I guess it makes sense, this being uh, one of the coarsest stones. This thing's going to have a screaming sharp edge when we're done. No burr yet. I will say this, from the factory, Spider Co's grind one side was off big time on one side. We'll try to straighten that out as much as possible, but just, you know, factory edges. Now, I will be doing a full sharpening here soon where I uh, do a beginner's video showing everything, explaining everything down to the detail. This video is more about the stones. I'm still trying to teach things on how to sharpen in this video. I do in every video, but I will be doing a beginner's guide to sharpening here pretty soon. I decided to bring everything over here to my bench so I could sit down and sharpen. So I think it'll go a lot faster with this desk and me lower, especially while filming. I know the angles might not be as good, but. Good. You can see at the top here where I'm having trouble hitting because of their grind. Let me see how my, my angle's going good. Everything's going good then right there. And the other side's looking good. It's a little dirty. We'll clean it up and look at that in a second. But 
it is what it is you just keep on sharpening so sometimes what i'll do to hit that now is in order to hit that instead of going the same way i'm going across the stone which is like this so i'm going to go across the stone and kind of watch my wrist right now i'm going to just kind of teeter not back like this so i'm first going to lift and then once i get to the tip so now i'm up higher going across the stone i'm to the tip now so now i'm hitting the tip but when i'm doing that i'm going to go up hit the tip and kind of rock a little backwards and it's such a small movement you you couldn't you wouldn't even know i'm doing it unless if i told you And that's just me trying to hit that tip and I'm really close to it right now. So that means I just need to keep working the way, the exact thing I'm doing right now. I just need to keep repeating. Always keep looking at your edge. Keep an eye on your grit pattern. You want to follow the grit. I scream that a lot to people, chase the grit, chase the grit. You almost want to chase the grit even more than the burr. And you want to do it basically at the same time. But the thing is, though, is if you're chasing the grit, you already know when the burr is going to hit. You can watch it. You can watch the grit go from the top of the bevel to the edge. Sometimes you're going to hit from the bottom up, meaning from the edge to the top of the bevel. So from the edge to the top of the bevel where, you know, the top of the sharpening bevel is. But even in that case, you're still watching, you know, you still want to watch that to make sure when it hits the top of the bevel. Hey, okay, let's go to the next stone. Let's dry this off. Now, I am going to, I'm done reprofiling basically. Um, I have a little tiny bit more left. I think I'll be able to get it done on this stone. Normally, you, since I'm very good at this at this point, I know what I'm capable of and what I'm not and what stones are capable of. But I do not recommend ever skipping stones. Reprofile off the first stone, get everything done on the first stone, then move. Like at this point, if I wanted to, I could deep, I could knock the burr off of this thing and it would be a perfect sharp edge right now. Yeah, this feels really good. This kind of feels like a 1200 grit diamond plate. That's what this feels like. Basically. And this one is...
I have a little bit at the tip that's not hitting. See that at the tip? I'll get that on this next pass, hopefully. And then now from here, this should be the last grip before it really starts polishing. It should basically start polishing from here because that last one, you know, is a lot like a 1200 grit. So from here on out, it's basically just refining. So I could have ended on that stone. 100% and I I mean this thing is very very sharp but we're going to take it all the way now this stone a lot less feedback it feels really good this one feels more cushiony it feels a lot more which makes sense, it, it probably has uh, less or finer diamond in it and more of the compound or, you know, whatever they make the stuff with. I can tell it's building up faster too. It's loading up faster. I hope this lighting is all right. Yeah, it's definitely uh, going to start polishing, especially after the stone. This is like the last stone, seems like before a real polish. Should be able to um, go a little faster too off of these. Yeah, that bird's moving back and forth. I probably could just change stones already. I'm just going to do one more pass across these and then I'm just going to go to the next stone. Now with pressure, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on these, but you want a little bit. I mean, you don't want to be putting pressure to the point to where you're rocking your edge or moving all over the place, but you want a little bit to where the diamonds, you know, take effect. And obviously the harder you push, the faster it's going to work with these stones. Now with regular diamond stones, I would not recommend that at all. These being like a matrix style CBN stones, I would definitely be a lot more okay with pressure than I would on a regular diamond plate. Now with a regular diamond plate, you put a little tiny bit of pressure, but not much. You want to be able to... To hold your angle is this one to hold your angle and not move around but also what it's about is you will kill the stone a diamond plate only has so much life to it just like any stone these stones, however, last long, long, a lot longer than any diamond plate. 
These you definitely get your money's worth out of them. Look at that. Whew. That was beautiful. Oh, you guys missed it. It was blurry. I'm sorry, guys. It's just the way it's soaked up. All right. Let's go to this side first. Oh, yeah. This is, it almost feels like all cushion. Um, like, almost like it's hard plastic, almost. Um, or like a bone, almost. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Like an extremely hard rubber. That's what it almost feels like. Not a lot of feedback on these. It's slick. Very slick. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's really polishing now. This next uh, plate is going to for sure. Ooh, yeah, that's sharp, boy. Damn, that's the thing with these, man. They really bring these super steels out of the... Uh, I mean, they just they make the best of them. Other stones, man, you can definitely use, work... Like with diamonds, yeah, of course. But other stones, yeah, they'll make these things sharp. But they, these just work so much better. You can probably use a little lighter pressure on these polishing stones. Especially uh, the longer you're on it. Man, the polishing side of these really goes a lot faster. I'm about to flip. Now, it's already a mirror edge. But, we're going to take it all the way. Hopefully it's not cloudy. Not a lot of feedback. Almost like a cushion ceramic stone. Like a ceramic stone with... Man, that mirror looks good. With um a little bit of a little bit of soft like it feels a lot like a rock, but it's kinda hard to explain. Kinda like a um you know like the the those hard um those hard linoleum tiles. That's what it feels like. Like a linoleum tile. Those really hard ones, like for garage floors. Stone's getting just a little bit clogged. I'm just gonna wipe it down a little bit. All right, let's take a look at these straps now. You can actually see, I don't know if it'll come up in camera, but you can actually see the diamond sparkling, or the monocrystalline diamond sparkling on the surface a little bit. It probably won't come up in the camera, but let's use it. So um, I can tell I'm going to have to put a little bit of extra on here, but this stuff, it, you don't want it thick. It'll take a long time to dry. So, oh wow, I can actually feel it. 
Wow. I almost wonder if I shouldn't have started with this course of a compound, which I normally really like the coarse compounds. Let's go with the green and then the yellow. These are just test samples of leather. All right, let's try the finer one. This one feels like it's still a little wet. And this was the one that I put the most amount on. Yeah, you can actually see it covering the surface. See that? I'm just going to keep going and I'll clean it off. I'll just go softer. Maybe I'm pushing too hard. I didn't feel like I'm even pushing very hard. It's just, like I said, this stuff does take a little while to dry. But it's been drying for a while. I let it dry overnight. So. The other ones feel dry. This one, like I said, you, you don't want to put a lot on there. It does not take much. All right, let me clean the surface of this and then we'll take a look at the edge. Wow, so a good and a bad thing happened. So before I put, when, before I strapped, this was a mirror polished edge. Now look at the grip pattern that's on there. So they actually scratched the surface into a grip pattern. Now, why is that a good thing? Because I like stropping compound that actually leaves a bite behind the edge. And boy, did it. Wow, it is very sharp. Um, so I find that to be a good thing. I mostly like a little bit of a grip pattern rather than a polish. Now, let me go just a little bit longer on one of these and see if I can't get rid of it. Which I think would be this one. This one I think would be, it's weird. The green one feels a little less coarse, but I think it's just because I put less on there. But, from the stone, I really, I didn't need to strap. I really didn't. I was just trying to use the compound for the first time. And remember, this is my first time using these compounds. So, you know, don't hold it against me if I, if I use them wrong and I shouldn't have used the black one. Maybe I should have only used the yellow one fresh off of these stones. But it is what it is. I, I, it's not a big deal. The edge still looks phenomenal. Let's look at the edge, but it was a complete mirror edge from the stone. Look at that. I think that looks beautiful, to be honest. Let's see if I can clean it off just a little bit more. Okay, so it's like a mirror polish with a grit pattern underneath it. Now remember, I probably did that wrong. I probably should have only went to the yellow or to the green. I probably should have never used the black. The black was just too coarse. That is, This is something I would use from a low grit. And I should have known that. But I'm trying to test out the, you know, the compounds. Not a big deal. Let's test the edge. Let's start with a paper towel. Oh, yeah. I'm messing up, but the edge is absolutely going through the towel. Let's go through this way.
Maybe messing up here. Let's go ahead and angle. Very nice. All right, let's do a piece of paper. I fall. This paper's hard to hold. Very, very sharp. I'll be honest, I love the way the edge looks with the polish, with the small grip pattern over the top of it. And it is still got the mirror on there. It just has a grip pattern over the top of it, which I think looks so nice. Let me wipe it off, it has a little bit of compound on there still. You can see where the compound kind of scratched it right there just a little bit. That was my fault. I need to be careful with the compound, but man. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So all in all, love the stones. I like the compounds. I can't wait to try these compounds on other edges. I have a bunch of edges I'm going to try it on, like even from factory edges. This is not the last video on these stones. There will be many other videos coming on these. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.